Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we are still cranking out these 2022 NWSL team-by-team previews. And today, we are going to take a deep dive into Kansas City Current. But first, a quick reminder to follow us on Twitter for all breaking news at Attacking Third. If you're listening to this as a podcast, please give us a five-star rating and review. It takes just a second, and it really helps us out. And you can do that on Apple Podcast uh, page right now with a five-star rating and review, and on Spotify as well on that attacking third page. So go ahead and uh, help us out. Give us five stars. Lisa, you ready to dive into uh, Kansas City Current? I am so ready. Uh, there's something about this team, and and we'll get into it because yeah. there's a lot to talk about with them, but... um. There's something about this team that I'm ready for them in 2022, and I don't think the rest of the world is. Come on, Lisa. I set you up with the pun. I said you're ready to dive in. The Kansas City Current. Are you? Is my dad joke that bad? Come on now. <laughs> I'm trying to push past all the the jokes about it. Even like doing research for this, when I type in Kansas City Current roster. It's like the Chiefs roster coming up. I'm getting better at my searching when I Google and I do all my prep for like games and and rundowns for this. It's Casey Current. I'm over over here making water jokes. Like, (laughs) come on. Oh gosh. No, but I'm 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 hyped to do this. It's been it's been fun linking up with you to do like actual like in depth, like singular, like team by team previews, you know, instead of, uh, you know, in the past, like when we do games previews and stuff like that, like we kind of take a look at uh, and double teams up and stuff like this, but this has been nice to be able to sort of sit in and flesh uh, some things out. So let's dive right in, right? No pun intended for real on this time. Uh, Let's take a look at this team overview. Uh, This was a team that was uh, one of many teams in process of uh, trying to nab a head coach for their head coaching position. Uh, They went with Matt Potter. It's going to be his first year with uh, Kansas City Current, a former United States Women's National Team coach. They named him head coach in January of 2021. This is coming off of uh, the previous inaugural season for this franchise where uh, Hugh Williams was a previous head coach, and he was moved out of that role, uh, was a former head coach, and is now in a more administrative role, I believe, director of scouting at this point. So that was one notable hire. An additional notable hire for this club within the offseason was the introduction of a new general manager and they brought in former NWSL player former a women's professional a professional soccer player Cami Levin into the fold as their new general manager so all of these different things on the administrative level to perhaps help this club improve on their standing last season which if you aren't aware Kansas City current did finish in 2021 as the last ranked team at the last year was 10 total clubs. Yes, there's an expansion this year and there will be 12, but for last year, it was a number 10 ranking really all the way through from beginning to end for this Kansas city side with a record of three, seven and 14 in light of that though, we did have an episode in early December where we did a way too early power rankings podcast for attacking third and we were impressed with some of the moves that were already happening early in the offseason for this Kansas City side and because of that with a combination of their efforts towards the latter stages of the regular season in 2021 we were ambitious with it and we put this team in a playoff position and said we would have them as number five. So uh, it was an interesting off season to, to say the least, to, to say the least, Lisa. But uh, I think as we go through this, this preview, we might uh, list a, a number of reasons as we go through the personnel as to why we might be sticking with this uh, ambitious pick. I don't think five is that even that ambitious, right? I mean, it's just over halfway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we are adding two teams into the fold this year. So going from 10 teams to 12 and and Kansas City was the expansion side last year. I mean, that's we need to remember that they they were playing on a makeshift soccer field at their home stadium. They didn't have a lot of facilities. And I think that the ownership and the front office personnel that has had the changes throughout this off season are making it a serious mission to have Kansas city be a very serious contender 
in the NWSL. And that's starting with playing their games at Children Mercy Park in Kansas City. I mean, that's where Sporting Kansas City plays their games. It's a beautiful facility. They're building new facilities, building the first ever all-female soccer stadium specific stadium right along the river in Kansas city, right along the river with the current in Kansas city. So there's just a lot of off the field movements that are happening with this team that I think are helping progress them through. And, and Kansas city is a team in the Midwest, right? The heartbeat of the country. It's a great location for a new soccer club. It's a great soccer city, but now being in its second year with the expansion draft happening for San Diego and Angel City in the offseason, Kansas City was exempt from that, which is huge. And that maybe played directly into their advantage that they had in this offseason because they weren't looking to make changes to protect themselves like every other club in the NWSL was. Instead, they were just looking to strengthen their roster and to grow. So we put them at five in early December. Now it's it's mid-February and preseason has started and we're looking at the roster ahead. I, I think our our projections for 22 might change a little bit, uh, but we'll get into it because there were just so many off-season changes that happened from the front office to players on the pitch for Kansas City. I um, I love that for Kansas City. The, the way they sort of closed out their 2021 versus how they started it, I think there were two different like sides of the spectrum in terms of, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter how you start, it's how you're finished. But when you're looking at that number 10 rating, it's like, oh, like, was there actual improvement, you know, throughout the season if you just stood maybe in the standings in the same level? And I think for watch, watching the soccer and watching things happening on the pitch, I think we started to see a little bit of difference, right, you know, uh, for the personnel on the pitch. And to sort of see all this be reflected during that time, alongside a lot of other different announcements, right? They unveiled their official rebrand. Uh, they announced their official name, which was the current, their Kansas City current now. They put out the official crest, right? Their inaugural season was all just uh, temporary, the keeping the same color scheme, but in terms of the badge and everything else, that is now in the past. And then alongside of that, just like you said, Lisa, you know, mentioning the new stadium, that they're going to be playing their home games in Children's Mercy Park with the home of a uh, MLS side, Kansas City, Sporting KC. Uh, but even within that announcement saying, hey, we have plans to build an NWSL specific stadium, right? So that's, mm -hmm. there's all these things that are happening off the pitch, right? That we're going to be looking into and, and maybe wondering about throughout the duration of 2022. But let's maybe center in on the personnel, right? Let's talk oh, a little yeah. bit about roster. Let's talk a little bit about player movement. In terms of breakout roster signings for this team, I mean, this franchise probably made the biggest splash, right? I had, oh my god, I keep doing that with the water punch. Jeez, I'm so sorry, everybody. I really don't. I'm really not trying to go there, but they did. They they really kind of just busted the gates open there in terms of the off season signings because their first one that they announced was the introduction of, of Sam Mewis to the club, the <laughs> North Carolina courage. It's okay. You can I'm keep sorry, laughing. It's this funny. All of the water. Puns They're just scary. coming out. It's like, you just can't help it. I can't wait till we start doing these for like, you know, for, uh, just for San Diego wave. This is just proof that we record these live because I'm oh, yeah. stifling. No, <laughs> laughter no, no, no. Right there's now. absolutely no, no, no. You're getting us in the in the purest way that you that you can uh, honestly uh but uh, along with sam mewis they started making additional acquisitions right uh bringing in you know building in through through the draft uh somebody like an elise bennett you know a jenna a winbrenner brooklyn enid you know looking at all these different draft selections but also getting somebody like an alex loera out of santa clara signing her in and then late into their off season, introducing Lynn Williams mm -hmm. from North Carolina courage with a trade with them as well. So a lot of big additions, right. To this, to this franchise and with big additions, there are also big losses, you know, that happen within an off season. So Kansas city current saw the departures of Darian Jenkins, Katie Bowen, uh, Michelle Mimone, Mariana Lo uh, La Roquette, Gabby Vincent, and Kiki Pickett throughout the offseason. When we're looking at the additions, when we're looking at the signings, 
who's sticking out here on either side of the of the balance beam here for you, Lisa? When you weigh the the losses versus the roster signings, the roster signings outweigh the losses, to be frank. Uh, Kansas City made it its mission to go and get big players, essentially heavy hitters in each of the phases of the field. They got A.D. Franch from Kansas, or from Portland in the middle of the 2021 season. Goalkeeper, uh, U.S. Women's National Team caliber. She's a superstar, um, knows how to win, and, and a veteran in the league. Then they went and they got uh, Kristen Hamilton in the front line. Um, they also, uh, then this offseason, went getting Sam Mewis in the midfield and getting Lynn Williams up top. They are to just two huge, huge grabs for Kansas City. And personally, I think Sam Mewis is the bigger one if I'm just looking at Lynn Williams and, and Sam Mewis because Sam Mewis as a midfielder, as the, the engine that runs the United States women's national team, she wears the number 10 jersey now. She is the creative midfielder. She is the lock. She can play a higher up midfielder position, play those slip passes through to the forward. She can also play the defensive six midfielder position. We've seen her slide into that role if she needs to, to be a big defensive block in the middle of the field. She can organize. She can lead with her voice. She can just do so many things. Um, and as a veteran and as a leader to join a Kansas City team only in its second season in the NWSL with a lot of players that went through a lot in 2021 with this Kansas City team. They did not win a lot of games. They don't know what it's like to win. They don't know what it's like to be on top. And Sam Mewis does. So she can bring that experience and that veteran ability to take this Kansas City current team from where it is and just raise the bar, continue to make it better uh, from her position on the field in the midfield and also in the locker room and at the training facility because her level that she shows up and plays with every single day is going to set the standard and it will be a trickle-down effect for every single player on this Kansas City team. When you look at some of the losses they have, um, I know we talked a little bit about this off air. I'm like sad that they lost Kiki Pickett because I think as a defender, she could have done a lot with this Kansas City team and really stepped into that role and developed as a young player in this league. Um, but uh, Darian Jenkins going to Orlando, that's another player that is going to do really well at Orlando. But these losses, um, as even though there are a number of them, the wins and the roster signings are just so much bigger having now Sam Mewis and, and Lynn Williams. I mean, even the relationship between those two, right? Like they've played together at North Carolina for years. Yeah. They play on the national team together and they're staying together in club. Heck, they even have a podcast together. Like their relationship <laughs> is just phenomenal between that. And that will translate with the soccer ball. Yeah, I'm with you uh, on that 100%. I think it's absolutely fair that you also highlighted the fact that there were changes that were happening for this club midseason, you know, yeah. bringing those players like French or Hamilton and Mace, you know, and those are just more players that people like Lynn Williams and Sam Mewis are familiar with playing at a certain level, yeah. even if it is with somebody like in a uh, French at the national team level or somebody like a Hamilton in a Mace where they were playing with at a club level, you know, so I, I'm in agreement that the, uh, the acquisitions, the additions are going to be the things that outweigh those those losses actually when it comes to sort of looking at this because despite maybe losing um nwsl experience and somebody like uh you know uh, katie bowen or or darian jenkins you or losing even youth prospects right young prospects in a kiki picket there was still a combination of those things that were addressed uh you know in in the drafts or, or signing somebody directly like an alex loera from uh, santa clara so uh i'm, I'm in agreement with you 100 percent that i think that the mm -hmm. the additions are absolutely like outweighing the losses ahead of the 2022 season in terms of a preseason roster though Let's take a look at it. It's our most favorite thing to do. We like to look at all of the names that are on a preseason roster. They've been varying from, you know, anywhere from, you know, 20-ish players to 30-plus players. And we love when there's a, a ton of names to, to take a look at. So in terms of Kansas City Current and their uh, preseason roster, for goalkeepers, they've got four at the moment with Kelsey Dossi, Adriana French, Carly Nelson, and Kayla Thompson. Defenders with eight. Elizabeth Ball, Kate Del Fava, Brooklyn Ince, Taylor Leach, Alex Loera, Izzy Rodriguez, Mallory Weber, and Jenna Winbrenner. For midfielders, it's 10, 
Chardonnay Curran, Kristen Edmonds, Lola Bonta, Chloe Lagarzo, Haley Mace, Eddie McCain, Sam Mewis, Medi Nolf, Victoria Pickett, and Desiree Scott. For forwards, they're running out with six. Molly Bez Bezlyle? Excuse me. I'm so, so sorry. You're the announcer, Lisa. Is that, <laughs> am I saying that correctly? Uh, uh, there's Elise Bennett, who is the college draft pick, Kristen Hamilton, JC Johnson, Lynn Williams, and Michelle Vasconcelos currently on loan. I'm taking a look at some of these players currently on the roster, and we're thinking about when we're looking at a potential starting 11, Lisa, there's names already on this roster that we can maybe point to and say, mm -hmm. this is a player that if preseason goes well, right, everything is on schedule, it's supposed to be, everybody's healthy, come the start of opening day, that there's a number of players here that we can say they're likely a lock for mm -hmm. a Kansas City current starting 11. I think it goes without saying maybe somebody like an AD French, right, who they got midseason is likely going to be manning the net for them moving forward, even within the defender line, looking at um, a player like Elizabeth Ball, right, who got a different contract, yeah. you know, extension with this club. There's investment there with this player, uh, you know, even in the midfield core with the new additions and somebody like a Sam Mewis, I don't believe you make a move like that, right? If you don't intend to utilize this player, but you've got other uh, veterans within there as well, whether it's like a Kristen Edmonds or a Lola Bonta. And then for the forward core, I think maybe at one point you can sort of look and see there might be some competition here, right? Yeah. In this front line. But when you have, when you made a move for somebody like a Kristen Hamilton midseason and then adding somebody like a Lynn Williams, I imagine you're going to try to be building the attack uh, with and around uh, these uh, players. So, uh, in terms of the personnel at hand, when we're looking at a potential starting 11 when we're looking at young process prospects or experienced players who's maybe standing out here for you lisa even if we're just looking at a starting 11. when you look at these numbers in the roster positionally um i'm interested to see what matt potter's going to throw out as as his formation because there's a lot of different possibilities here with 10 midfielders in this mix, six forwards and eight defenders. There's definitely a lot of possibilities and some changes he's going to have to cut down on before the start of the Challenge Cup happens. The locks that you mentioned, yes, they're, they're in for me, those locks hoping that everything goes according to plan and players stay healthy. Uh, but some players that I'm looking at, I'm in particular midfielder, Addie McCain. She's a second year player in the NWSL. She was with Kansas city current last year and Hugh Williams. Uh, she got a few minutes and, and a few games under her belt um, with Kansas city playing in the midfield. She suffered an injury, so she didn't see as much time on the pitch as she would have liked, but she's a player out of Texas A&M, a, a midfielder. She was sec mid fielder of the year. She has a lot of potential and a lot of growth. So for me, she's a young player that I'm going to look at because of all of the experience that is already on this roster and in the midfield, like you mentioned, um, it, Kristen Edmonds, Lola Bonta, Sam Mewis, uh, Victoria Pickett, even Haley Mace, even there's, there's a lot there. So if Addie McCain can kind of wipe the slate clean of last year. I mean, use her experiences that she had, but take this year as a year to just learn and a year to grow, to just be a sponge every single day, working alongside players like Sam Mewis, pick up her skills that she's doing and translate that to McCain's own game. I think that Addie McCain could be a player that in the future of the NWSL could make some changes and we could start to see her progressing, especially when, Kansas City doesn't have a lot to lose, right? They finished, which is something that is unfortunate, but they have to keep that in, into perspective for the 2022 season. They finished the last in, in the league in 2021. So the only place to go from there is up. So make those risks on the field. Try out different things. Try different players in different positions. And if Addie McCain gets on the field, I want her to just give it her all and, and see where she can grow. So she's a younger player. Um who, who's had time in the league before, but someone I'm keeping an eye on for Kansas City in 2022. Yeah, I think that that's fair. I think a lot of oftentimes when uh, folks are 
conceptualizing like a young prospect, right? Or a top prospect. I mean, think maybe they're looking immediately at who's coming out of uh, the draft, but that absolutely includes like players who are like McCain, who are just going to be entering their, their second year, right. In the league and sort of see what uh, they can still bring to a team like the current, when it comes to this roster and looking at the new faces that are going to be involved with the club. It's a it's a mix. It's like they've got new faces, but who are experienced veteran players, right? Whether there's somebody like a mm -hmm. a Mewis or or a Williams, but there's also players on this roster that are new faces and just new to being professionals in general. So there are areas of opportunity for experienced players uh, to be to uh, be leaned on during this time. So when we're looking at the experienced essential player that Kansas City current might find themselves leaning on at certain moments during uh, the 2022 season, preseason or otherwise, I think you and I can both agree that we're looking at a particular midfielder in Lola Bonta mm -hmm. as somebody who is likely going to be that sort of player who's uh, leaned on for whether it's experience, leadership, or otherwise on and off the pitch. This is a this is a player that's been involved in NWSL for a long amount of time who's not unfamiliar, right, to the Kansas City uh, area. She was a part of those uh, Kansas City rosters in the former franchise of FC Kansas City. And we noticed uh, even when during the 2021 season, when there were areas or stretches of time where perhaps the club was impacted by an injury bug, somebody like Lola Bonta's presence was very clearly missed, right? In terms of trying whatever the team was trying to figure out in terms of the soccer they were looking to produce on the pitch. So I have to imagine that going into this 2022 season, even with the introduction of new faces, uh, even with the introduction of young prospects, that this is a player that's uh, going to still uh, play an essential role uh, for this roster moving forward. I agree. Lola Bonta is someone that can step up and, and be an integral part. I could even see her pushing higher into the forward line and, and contributing in that front line, scoring goals and doing a lot. She's just a player that puts so much emphasis on her love and her passion for the game. She really took the city of Kansas City under her wings last year and became uh, a player for the city, for the fans. So that connection will hopefully spread throughout the team and throughout the fans throughout 2022 so yeah I mean Addie McCain for me as a young player and and Lola Bonta adding her to that list as the experienced player to uh, do big things for Kansas City this year in terms of an international spotlight for this team we, we've been doing this in our previews as well uh, and whether or not there are players on the roster that we could see uh, you know making departures perhaps throughout the season in light of 2022 uh, having a lot of different World Cup qualifying competitions going on obviously the the other additional uh, international windows that could be taking place and I think the most notable players right when you're taking a look at who could be coming in and out of uh, Kansas City current you're looking at somebody like a, a Sam Mewis, right? Mm -hmm. uh, looking at somebody like Lynn Williams, Adriana French, uh, obviously still part of that goalkeeper pool, could possibly see some time back in national team camps as well, right? And that's just at the United States level, but that's that's not even uh, you know mentioning somebody like a like a Desiree Scott, another yeah. veteran of this league, right? Another experienced player that perhaps this club will be looking to for for leadership as well on and off the pitch. But you know, a gold medal. Olympian with uh, the Canadian women's national team. I think you have to look at that because it is a World Cup qualifying year uh, for uh, the women's side of the game. And these are really heavy hitters for Kansas City. Um, if they lose AD French in goal and Sam Ewis in the midfield and Lynn Williams up top, um, even Desiree Scott in the midfield and, and defensively, those are really big holes for Kansas City. So while they have those players, rack up the points, get goals, get shutouts, make your goal differential really big and stretch it. That way you have a little bit of cushion when those international players are away with their national team. Um, as of right now, Sam Ewis, right? She's not on the She Believes Cup roster for the United States, so she's not away at camp. She is rehabbing and, and training with Kansas City, which is off to a good start, but I that's not going to stay for very long. She'll be back with the national team. Um, so it's if they can kind of create cushion for themselves while they have their full team stacked before these players go away for international duty. 
So here we are. We're we're talking about uh, off season moves, right? Mm-hmm. That this that this team has made in terms of assembling a preseason roster, coaching staff, right? Additional hires at the administrative level, even dipping into things that this club was already doing mid season to at late end of season to lead into and look ahead to the twenty twenty two season. Talking about uh, facilities, right? Resources. We've been hearing that a lot when it comes to this franchise, especially in light of the newer names that they brought in, right? Hearing directly Sam Mewis, Lynn Williams, we had her on the show as well, talking about a lot of the great resources and the things that Kansas City as a franchise is trying to provide and set standards in terms of NWSL clubs throughout the league. So this leads us, I think, to our biggest burning question entering the 2022 season for Kansas City Current is will all of the hype translate to the pitch in the 2022 season? I don't know, Lisa, what do you think? I mean, this is such a big question because there is so much change. Even like the announcement of the new crest and the new name in their very last match of 2021, there was so much hype around it. It was this crazy cool video that they put out and in stadium, all of the fans had different color wristbands and it was a whole show and a whole production. So there's a lot of hype. There's no denying it. There's a lot of hype around this team. I think that if they can block out the noise, if they can expect to be at the bottom and have to climb their way to the top, we could see this translating to the the team and to the field. I don't think that they're a a club and a team and players that are going to walk into their first match thinking they're going to win five, nothing and five nil and just sweep the, the champ, the challenge cup, sweep the regular season and be this dominant team. They have to work at it day in and day out. They really have to buy into this mentality. They have to play like they have a chip on their shoulder. And I think they will. I think that Kansas city has that chip on their shoulder. I think that, They went from playing in a baseball stadium last year to playing in Children's Mercy Park this year to getting their very own facility for next season that they are trying to prove that they belong in this league and that they are are a powerhouse, top dogs. I think it's going to translate. Will will it all translate? I don't know, but I I hope it will, and I hope it does, which maybe leads us to our our projected finish of them in 2022. What are you thinking? (laughs) Absolutely. Listen, I, I'm with you. I, I, I'm <laughs> here's another here's another water joke. I'm drinking. It. <laughs> I'm drinking the hype. You know, I, I'm drinking the water. Right. I'm drinking the Kansas City current high tra- uh, high and pitch. You know, it's, fun it's like to watch. Like even at the end of 2021, this team was really, really fun to watch. Go in and play spoiler. To there's something clubs. there's something about being a part of Team Chaos, right? It's just yes. always a different. It's just always a different sort of energy, and if we we're gonna be paying attention to that to see if all of that combined with all of the stuff that we've been watching from this team in the offseason translates to the pitch specifically. In terms of the projected finish in 2022, I'm oval. I'm sticking with our ambitious pick that we made in December when we did our way too early power rankings. I'm going to push that into an actual literal standing on the NWSL table. I'm going to say that this team does do enough to jump up those five spaces and maybe clinch a playoff spot. I'm going to stick with Kansas City and say that they are absolutely going to take that uh, that next step forward. How about you? So you're putting Kansas City at a number five. I just I want think they can on take record. It. I just want to say it out there. Yes, I'm with listen, you, Sandra. Don't worry. You gotta we're put it team. on record. We're a team on this one. I think that Kansas City is going to make the 2022 NWSL playoffs. I love it. Well, I would love to see it. I would love to see it. Uh, I know we've been doing uh, some ranges here and and, and doing some uh, predictions like that. And uh, I know we love doing that because another thing we love doing <laughs> is coming on back to the show and talking about if we were wrong or if we were right. So <laughs> we will see what happens throughout the duration of 2022 with Kansas City Current. We want we'll to thank back, everybody. We'll be back with more water puns throughout. Oh the year my gosh! Too. Yeah, <laughs> apparently I just keep cranking them out, no matter what. I don't need to be prompted at all. I just have them all here in uh, in the arsenal for everybody. Thanks everybody for listening to our Kansas City Current 2022 preview portion of the episode. We've got full team by team previews for all 12 clubs in the NWSL coming up. Stay tuned for more. You can drop us your thoughts about Kansas city current on Twitter at attacking third or in the comments. If you subscribe to YouTube, visit youtube.com slash attacking third. Don't go anywhere. 
We've got an exclusive interview coming up with Kristen Edmonds of Kansas City Current. We'll be right back after a quick break. 